Hi guys, Jim Robinson here. Here to show you about publishing an InfoPath form into SharePoint. Um, of course, this is going to assume that you've got SharePoint um, licenses such that you have SharePoint form server, which is going to be which is going to mean that you have to have the SharePoint um, server version and the enterprise CALs client access licenses. So what I've got here is an InfoPath form that was built somewhere else. And the first mistake that people usually make when they open an InfoPath form that was built somewhere else and published somewhere else is they double click on it and you get this error message saying permission levels and you can't fill it out here. And what that is is because it's been published to a location that, that you don't have. However, the way to get around that, assuming that you have uh, an InfoPath client on the machine that you're on is to right click on it and just go to design. So once you do that, up pops your form and you can do various editing and whatever else you need to do. But in my case, I'm already done with the editing for now and I want to publish it and see how it looks in the SharePoint environment. So I'm going to go to File, choose Publish, and you can see I've got multiple choices here. I can publish the form uh, locally here. I can publish to a network location. I can publish it to a list of email recipients. Um, or I can publish the SharePoint server, which is what I want to do in this case, so that it can be centrally located, and a lot of other reasons too. Just say OK to that save message. And here's the first thing that happens. Um, it wants it wants me to save it to to a particular location. That's fine. I'll just save it over the top of what I got. Then the next thing it's going to ask you for is the location of your SharePoint or InfoPath form services site. So this is this can get a little bit confusing because it's not the site that you're actually going to use it on. It's the location of form services. So in my case, um, that is going to be the 1111 um, uh, the the 1111 port so if you don't know that you can of course just start um, SharePoint Central Administration and it'll take you right there but I happen to know that that's what it is so I'm gonna click next And it says happy, happy. I found that um, it should. It, it did actually go out and talk to that server to, before it got to that point. In this case, I'm given um, a few more options. In uh, in in my case, I'm going to create a form that's going to be accessible across all of my different um, site collections. So I'm going to say it's an administrator approved template. This is advanced stuff, and that's it's really advanced just because. Um, just be, just because if you're a developer in a large enterprise you you need to coordinate with all the other all the other uh, area managers or area developers as well as the central admin administrator I'm just doing a small one here so the next thing it's going to ask me is okay give me a location and file name for the form template where SharePoint can see it which could be the same location but I usually um, like to have another location because I'm backup happy. I like to have nine copies of everything it seems like. So I'll just put it out here in this temp folder right on the SharePoint server and I'll call it change order which happens to be the name of my form and click next. So the next thing that it's gonna that it's gonna do is it's going to ask me which columns are are do I want to show up as as list items in uh, it, when I when I see the when I see this particular form in SharePoint. So in other words, uh, when you go to SharePoint list, you see all the column names or SharePoint document library. You see the column names. It's asking me which field forms do I want to to uh, to to map to column names in that list. And this takes a bit to fill out. So I'm going to pause the video right here. Um, I'll just show you. Just click add. And then you pick, for example, um, in my case, change order number. And do you want the user to be able to edit that field from outside of the form? And I'll say, I'll say no in my case for that one, but for others, I might say yes. And I'll pause right there. 
Okay, taking the off of pause. So you can see now I have added all of the columns that I want to show up as list items. And I've also down below specified which columns I want to be able to use as as uh, input and output parameters so that one web part can uh, make a connection to this web part. So if I have a job numbers list web part and I want to show just the change orders for that job number, I could connect the two web parts together as long as I have these types of parameters. So I'll click Next and I'll go ahead and say Publish. And it says your form was published successfully. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to pause it, over, pause it again so I can hop over to the central administration to show you the next step. Okay, picking up again. Now I'm over in central administration. And I haven't, remember, I just published it to a local folder location. So I'm going to go down here to general application settings and go to manage form templates to get that form actually into uh, the SharePoint central administration form services site. Okay, I had to pause you there for a second to get my password right for this account. So I'll just show you again. Go down here to Manage Form Templates. And then as long as you're logged in as System Account, uh, which in my case is SP Farm, you should be able to see this window. Let's refresh that in a little bit. Okay, so you can see I've got other forms up here. Um, but I don't have my new form yet because remember I just published that locally so I'm gonna go over here to upload form template and I'm gonna browse out to it in that temporary location where I published it and then I click verify this is the administrator administrator function and uh, it'll just run through some tests and it'll say yeah it's ready to upload to the server or it'll say no it hasn't been published yet so you want to make sure that you go through that first if you didn't first publish it, it wouldn't let you do this step. So the other thing is, since this is a new template, I don't have to say upgrade the form if it already exists. But that's it. Then you just click Upload, and it will start to upload it. And this may take uh, several minutes, or, in, or it may go quickly. It just kind of depends on the complexity and what's going on on your machine. So in this case, um, all I've done, though, is I have brought it into, I guess, the central administration form services area. I still can't access this form from any of my site collections or individual sites. So that's the next thing that I need to do. So I've got it into SharePoint, but I can't use it yet. So I need to go back and activate it to a site collection. You can see I've got my new form here on the list now, which is great, but I need to now activate it to a site collection and I need to pick which site collection I want and it's not that one so I'm gonna go change my site collection and I'm actually gonna change my web application as well and now I've got the site collection I want and the web application that I want so that's what I'm gonna activate it to And while that's coming up, I'll bring up, whoops, I'll bring up the site collection that I want. And I'll actually pause it a little bit while that, while that comes up. It looks like it may take a second. You can see it kind of spinning here, so I'll pause again. It's funny, as soon as I paused, it came up. So I just went to the Document Center, and now I can see I've got this in my, in my form library, my form templates library, on this PMP Sandbox site collection. I have a new template called Change Order Owner. And that's also a content type. So I'm pretty happy at this point. I can actually go and activate this as a as, as a, a, a template form or actually a content type for a particular site. So I'll pause again while I go and go into a specific site. 
Okay, and just to kind of show a different spin, I'm in a specific document library that I've already created. Now, I think normally you would create a separate document library, or call it a forms library, just for this new form. But in my case, I'm going to actually activate it as a new content type for an existing document library that's already got another document type another content type, excuse me. So you just go, you go into your document library, you go to your library tab, you go, um, one of the things you have to do if you want to activate a new content type is go to library settings. And think of content type as just a document type. So one content type might be Excel, another might be an info path form, another might be a picture. So in here, in order to manage content types, you can see I can't, there's no place for me to add content types. You do have to go to advanced settings and mark allow management of content types this very first option at the top once you've done that you can say OK and you'll see a new option on here called content types and you can see um, the content types that you have and uh, you can see I actually did this already because my content type is actually already there but uh, I'll remove that just so you can see how, how you go through and remove and add if you want to do that. Delete this content type. It's gone. And now I will add from existing site content types, which inherit, I think, from the site collection. So we should have this change order owner that I just added. Click Add, say OK. And once that's done, you now have a new content type sitting here. And you can back out at your site, or at your uh, site collection I should say, or your document library, so many words, you're in your document library now when you go to documents you can say new document and I see my change order owner as a new document here a new uh, which we know is actually technically called a content type and so I can see the uh, the, the form is now published in SharePoint and that's pretty much it. Um, the only other thing to, to note is um, that when you do this, you will want to go and create some views that include your new um, your new f your new f um, columns. Remember, I promoted those columns as I was publishing the InfoPath form template. You'll want to come in and uh, go to uh, let's see create view and it'll pop open the create view hopefully here and you can say uh, what type of view do you want to create so you might want to create like a data sheet view um, I'll just create a standard view And you can see I have now all of these columns that I promoted during that process um, of publishing available to me in uh, in the list of columns for any view that I want to create. So that was the really the uh, only other thing that I wanted to show you. So that concludes this process. So basically, from InfoPath, you publish to a so, to a location that SharePoint can see. Then from Central Administration Form Services. You add to you add your published form to Form Services. Then you activate it to your site collection. Then you um, add a content type to the document library where you want to use it. And that's it. Thanks a lot. I'm Jim Robinson. I hope you didn't sleep through the whole thing. Thank you.